it is not that you finish ayurveda study in 2 years you understood ayurveda you finish ayurveda study in 2 years or 5 years or 10 years or how many years it is you study it even with full heart and full effort you study it you get a full hold of it you cannot get convinced that you have understood ayurveda the understanding of ayurveda continues that is time as time passes by the understanding of ayurveda enhances day by day your understanding of ayurveda enhances so the longer you are associated with ayurveda the bigger the knowledge that you perceive within you Hello Dr. Parta. Hello. Uh thank you so much for this interview. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. It's my pleasure. So, I am Parta Sarathi. It's a very the name is to give an explanation about the name. It's a Sanskrit name. Partha Arjuna Sarathi a uh, driver of a chariot. So, Partha Sarathi is Lord Krishna who was driving the chariot. So, that's the meaning of my name to start with so my experience with ayurveda or my introduction to ayurveda my encounter with ayurveda it was the most special period in my life i come from a family of medical doctors that is western medical doctors though i have a very old tradition of ayurveda just my great grandmother practicing ayurveda no one else in the family knew about ayurveda because they were all my father was a medical doctor there were many other medical doctors western medical doctors in the family so i lived in the atmosphere of medicine so i used to go to my father's clinic to see what is happening in his clinic to follow my father's patients ask doubts about medicine all those things I was very much passionate about medicine and god's grace due to some important in many events in my life i had an encounter with sanskrit with sanskrit language so i started studying sanskrit language during my school days especially when was when i was 15 16 years old i started studying sanskrit language through an organization called sanskrita bharati so this sanskrit language changed so much my interest into medicine yeah, i was continuing to have interest in medicine but with the influence of sanskrit it was a kind of a love with sanskrit i should call because of that i got very much interested i i not very much interested i would rather say i got introduced about a sign a branch of medicine which can be studied in sanskrit so when i reached the stage where i have to choose my profession after my schooling when i reached a stage where i have to choose a profession then i came to know that there is a opportunity to study medicine with sanskrit so only thing i knew about ayurveda is you can learn a medical science with sanskrit so with that experience or with that knowledge that there is a science in sanskrit i chose ayurveda though many in the family were not happy with it because those days when i was starting to study ayurveda ayurveda was not that accepted 
as it is accepted nowadays so even in my family they were asking a question why you have to choose ayurveda because your father has a set hospital or a clinic you have to just finish your medicine and just go and take over your father's profession so it was a hard choice to choose ayurveda and uh, fortunately i chose it and i entered ayurveda college coimbatore fortunately i was in the college which had a great legacy not just with a great legacy of teachers but with a great legacy of students who became the teachers when we were in the college like many special teachers who were once students of ayurveda in the same college that is ayurveda college coimbatore which was a gurukula so these teachers who were the students of the same gurukula many teachers of mine who were the students and many teachers were the teachers of the gurukula so when they taught ayurveda to us that had a lineage that had a specific type of they usually call it as the koimatur school of thought people it's very commonly called as a koimatur school of thought thought this koimatur school of thought gave a very strong impact in the study process of ayurveda so along with ayurveda the sanskrit got little stronger and stronger because sanskrit is also a subject when we study ayurveda so i happened to do a small course with rashtriya ayurveda vidyapeeth a prathama diksha with rashtriya ayurveda vidyapeeth to enhance the knowledge of sanskrit which eventually gave a very good pathway to study ayurveda in a better way so the study of sanskrit by itself not because of the sanskrit knowledge the study of sanskrit or the way in which we studied the sanskrit or the way in which we studied ayurveda gave much more pathway to understand the philosophical aspects of ayurveda in a better way though when we studied philosophy we did not know how this philosophy is going to help us in a study as people who just finished schooling and entered into a med- ayurveda study we were very confused why and how this philosophy is going to help us in the study of ayurveda but it went on we we were going on without clarifications it just went on for few years but only in the later part of the study it got so clear how this philosophical aspect of ayurveda is helping to get a full grasp of ayurveda so with that when we finished ayurveda in the five and a half year course it nearly took six years when we finished ayurveda yes we studied ayurveda we got the basics of ayurveda but still we were not clear how this ayurveda is implemented in a day to day life when we see patients how do we understand a disease all those things were still confusing when we were even even after we finished ayurveda so it is not that easy to get that every year by year we increase our knowledge and we become very great practitioners by the end of the college it is it was impossible even as interns when we were just practicing ayurveda along with our gurus people used to get admitted in the college for various treatments we follow the treatments even at that time i would tell we were not very confident enough to practice on our own because we still did not get that complete hold of ayurveda so gradually things went on and uh, we were fortunate enough uh, three of us from our batch we were fortunate enough to have a we got an admission into a course organized by iaim institute of ayurveda which was a wing of frlht bangalore we were given a free course and under that course we were with various gurus special mentioning we were in kotaka lairi vaidyashala we were in triveni nursing home trivandrum we were with dr ravi shankar parvaja in puttur we were with dr l mahadevan in nagarkoil and many other doctors gave many sessions 
in-house sessions. We were in Bangalore for a few months, many sessions there, and then we were with many gurus in various places, in various parts of the country, the South South. We were in Mangalore, we were in Kerala, we were in Nagarkoil, we were in Trivandrum, another part of Kerala. It was a journey. And this journey where we saw what is happening with gurus and the grace of all the gurus and the grace of all the gurus in the college days, everything together. Only in that period, I would, I would frankly tell that it is this period which made a whole trigger or a whole change in the way we understood Ayurveda. Though we had all, I would not say all, we had the basics of Ayurveda academically. But to bring that to reality, this course that we were fortunate enough to get, that is the course was called as Good Clinical Practices in Ayurveda, GCP in Ayurveda. That made a huge change in which, that, that made a huge change in the way we understood Ayurveda. That was a main trigger, being with gurus and understanding, not just being with the gurus or learning from the gurus. I would say it is like being with the guru and understanding the way in which the guru thinks. So it is not the way in which the Guru teaches, it is the way in which the Guru thinks. When we started to get an idea of, of that level, when we got a grasp of that level, that changed. Really it was a, an important period in our life. So after that, our journey with Aryavedya Pharmacy and again the mother institution. Our study was with Aryavedya Pharmacy, then we entered into Aryavedya Pharmacy after this course. So stage by stage, the journey in Aryavedya Pharmacy was also educative, as you must be knowing. When we work, unlike any other profession, it is not that we work with the knowledge that we received in the previous years. It is the work in Ayurveda is again a learning process. You learn. You see thousand patients. And the thousand and one, the next thousand and first patient is another learning process. We were fortunate enough to be with Aryavedya Pharmacies Hospital and also with the Training Academy jointly. So that helped us to enhance the academic knowledge and enhance, hence, therefore enhancing the practical knowledge as well. So that journey was again a very important journey. So there here at this point, I would like to give a small shloka, which has a mentioning in our Vedas, which explains about knowledge, how to receive knowledge, what is the method in which one gets knowledge. Acharyat Padamadatte, that is one fourth of the knowledge you get from the teachers. Padam Sishya Swamedhaya, another one-fourth you get from your self-study. Padam Brahmacharibhyam, another one-fourth knowledge you get from your fellow students or fellow colleagues in the process of working, in the process of learning or in the Gurukula or in the college or in the work atmosphere, etc. Sesham Kalakramenacha. And there is another one-fourth which you get as time passes by. It is not that you finish Ayurveda study in two years, you understood Ayurveda. You finish Ayurveda study in two years or five years or ten years or how many years it is. You study it even with full heart and full effort, you study it, you get a full hold of it. You cannot get convinced that you have understood Ayurveda. The understanding of Ayurveda continues. That is time. As time passes by, the understanding of Ayurveda enhances. Day by day, your understanding of Ayurveda enhances. So the longer you are associated with Ayurveda, the bigger the 
knowledge that you perceive within you. So, I'm working for Ayurveda Pharmacy, but very recently, two years ago, Swami Dayananda Saraswati wanted to convert his allopathy hospital, a fully functional allopathy hospital where there were 12 medical doctors, surgeons, gynecologists, pediatrician, anesthetist. It was a fully functional allopathy hospital. He had a long vision of converting this hospital to make it into a complete Ayurveda hospital. He executed this idea two years before. The allopathy hospital was dissolved and we were about to, the hospital was about to be taken over as a completely functional Ayurveda hospital. So Swami Dayananda Saraswati approached uh, Krishna Kumarji about the hospital that is to run this as a Ayurveda hospital and with the guidance of Krishna Kumarji this hospital has been converted into a Ayurveda hospital. It functions under the trust, Shruti Seva Trust, which is the trust which is taking care of the ashram, Arshavidya Gurukulam, which is a institute of Vedanta. People come and study Vedanta in this Arshavidya Gurukulam. So under this trust, this hospital is run as a completely functional Ayurveda hospital and we were we were blessed to be called to take care of this hospital or to develop this hospital and Krishna Kumarji was also very kind enough to spare us to develop this hospital so it's already two years uh, in this two years of development the first three or four months it was just construction bringing in systems training people and all those things actually speaking it is functional since one and a half years in this one and a half years of functioning it is it has become a a complete hospital where all types of ayurveda treatments are done including vamana virechana rakta mokshana including sera vedana all kinds of ayurveda treatments for all kinds of diseases we have already had patients from seven eighteen different countries hospital is going very well it's, we have long bookings also people are booking even for 2017 2018 we have long bookings going on and it's a very it's not a big hospital it is just a hospital with 15 rooms maximum of 20 patients going on very well it's a small family i would not call the people working in the hospital as a as a it's as, as a small organization i would call it as a big family it's just a family atmosphere we are all living together working together enjoying together all together so as i told little before i was even prepared to quit ayurveda study when i was in when i just finished first year or when i fin when i was about to enter the second year or even in the second year i was not sure whether i'll continue ayurveda or not because it did not make much of a sense that time okay. because the age at 18 or 19 though I had a little background I'm not a strong background a very little background of Ayurveda a little ba background of uh, philosophy everything it was not that acceptable like I couldn't accept Ayurveda as a science because my expectation was a science a medical science in Sanskrit but Ayurveda was not a medical science in Sanskrit it was a Shastra which was complete in itself so I was expecting my parameter was science and I was expecting my parameter to be satisfied with my Ayurveda study it did not happen when we study Vata Pitta Kapha from a science perspective I want to see Vata Pitta Kapha I want to feel Vata Pitta Kapha I want to do everything about Vata Pitta Kapha but Vata Pitta Kappa is an understanding. So I couldn't, we were not very much, I was not very much convinced about that. And philosophy, for example, the first year, we have Padartha Vijnana as a subject. We study various philosophies, Sankhya, Nyaya, Vaisheshika, so many things. We have Tarka Sangraha. In and out, top to bottom, we have studied Tarka Sangraha for the sake of passing the examinations. But 
how is tarka sangraha useful for the study of ayurveda well, it was absolutely not clear what is tarka sangraha where am i going to use this sankhya philosophy sankhya philosophy as sankhya philosophy avyakta mahat ahankara panchatan matra okay everything is fine we study everything we can write everything and pass an examination but what is the use we did not for example in our first year we were studying ashtanga sangraha sutrasthana we couldn't relate the sankhya philosophy in ashtanga sangraha sutrasthana sankhya philosophy was different nyaya vaisheshika that was different ashtanga sangraha sutrasthana was different but now i will tell each and every word or a sentence in ashtanga sangraha or ashtanga hridaya is based on sankhya philosophy or any other philosophies this was not clear when we did not understand it is a philosophy this sh- sh- uh, subject what we study has a philosophical background it was very weird it was just informations and it seemed to be some mystified informations when you don't sleep in the night vata is increased when you sleep during the day kapha is increased this information how will kapha get increased when we don't when we sleep during the day what will be the changes what will be the chemical changes our thought process was more westernized we see we want all evidences all parameters to be satisfied if kapha is increased how to understand the kapha by parameters what is the reason for the kapha increase when we sleep during the day these were all constant doubts we were not very much convinced with the information convinced in the sense yes we were very much convinced that it is because we study in the philosophy that apto apta vachana we have to accept apta vachana you you, sh- you can have a doubt you can have a questioning in apta vachana to strengthen the knowledge but you can ha- you cannot have a doubt on apta vachana whether it is correct or not we were little convinced that our aptas because coming from a traditional background that is from an indian traditional perspective we are all convinced that what is mentioned in the book is correct but how what is the methodology that was not very much convincing and to apply it on a day to day basis we need more stronger conviction just to uh, accept the informations that we study in the text and apply it modify it apply it as and when required in the way in which we have to apply that for that we need a complete cohesion of the philosophical understanding of philosophy into ayurveda ayurveda was not separate philosophy was not separate it goes together you, you can understand ayurveda only with the basis of philosophy was clear only in the later part of our ayurveda study so which was a most difficult period in our study process was the first few years for me at least mm-hmm. i don't know about others yes of course because we share with our friends yeah. so for all of us i would tell at least for all of our batch all of us in our batch it was not that easy in the first few years hesitation dejection because we are all trained not trained we live in that kind of a thought process mm-hmm. our day to day approach is in a western perspective because if this is happening if you have uh, less energy eat more this is the way in which our mind is trained we don't understand the process involved we are western our understanding or thought process is westernized not only in the western countries even in india or at least for me i would tell we expect everything from a modern platform because a modern platform is strongly set ayurveda does not function from a modern platform so we need to change the platform that changing the platform is the whole key of ayurveda when we st- still see ayurveda with the western parameter or a western mindset ayurveda will be weird ayur it's very difficult to accept ayurveda with that mindset a western mindset so the whole key about ayurveda is 
changing the whole mindset from a westernized approach to a different kind of an approach and that doesn't happen that easily do you think both uh, modern science and ayurveda can work together i have two answers two strong answers one answer is strongly yes another answer is strongly no <laughs> the strongly no is if you want to apply the ayurveda principles to a modern concept inside a modern concept it is not possible for example diabetes from a modern perspective the final understanding of diabetes is when your blood sugar level is more you have a problem your diabetes is stronger your disease is stronger to reduce the blood sugar levels is the main focus of treatment how to reduce the blood sugar levels with tablets with diet exercises cut down the sugar do strong exercises utilize the blood sugar in the blood etc so this is a westernized understanding searching an ayurveda medicine to cut down this blood sugar levels is absolutely not ayurveda it is just a herbal approach mm -hmm. eat bitter gourd make a juice of bitter gourd don't take sugars complete no rice these are all absolutely absurd approaches here ayurveda and western medicine cannot go together the answer is strongly no yes if i should tell the answer is also yes ayurveda and uh, western medicine can go together the way in which it can go together is for example the ayurveda understanding has to be in an ayurveda way and the western understanding should be in a western way they can go hand in hand individually for example if someone has diabetes if you wish i'm just giving a very crude example mm -hmm. if someone is giving a medicine to reduce blood sugar levels okay that, that can go which will effectively prevent the complication when the blood sugar levels are under control the chances of diabetic neuropathy or nephropathy or retinopathy they are all reduced greatly but a treatment from an ayurveda perspective will work in a way that the bl excessive blood sugar is not produced in the blood the way the way in which the ayurveda works or approaches is totally different so in that way ayurveda can go separately the western system of medicine can go separately they will meet at some point but if you mix western approach and an ayurveda approach it will not go together in another way i can tell that you can you can see the western approach from an ayurveda concept you can see the ayurveda concept from a western point of view you can do that but you cannot mix both this has to be separate the western understanding has to be separate the ayurveda understanding has to be separate if we mix them both at some point of time mm. we will go wrong you receive many brazilian people in yes. the hospital yes yes uh, and the times you work and if you yes. now yes they yes they exactly what do you see is it more difficult for the patients okay first talk to the patients okay what's more difficult you see from brazilian patient for understand or accept ayurveda this is one good question for the definitely understand definitely you know, see this before come to india yes actually they come with an expectation that on a simple way if i should tell you their expectation is that they get an understanding that when you do panchakarma all the problem will be taken care of you come with a disease after panchakarma you go with the disease the people come people come with this thought so the idea idea to modern science and yes. ayurveda yes in a so, no. in a modern perspective if you start the treatment almost by the end of the treatment the disease is the intention of modern treatment by the end of the treatment the disease is cured mm -hmm. when the symptoms are not present the western system of medicine the disease is taken care of but we don't approach it that way 
for us we are for example the patient after the panchakarma treatment they might still have the symptoms within them because we are not handling the symptoms we are handling the cause we are handling the process involved or the cause or the disease process which showed these symptoms these people who come for the treatment not only from brazil from any part of the country even from india in the matter of fact when they come for the treatment they come with set of symptoms or some diagnosis they wanted that symptoms or diagnosis to go away in the end of the treatment which is not the way in which ayurveda functions i would rather tell in a way that only by the end of the treatment the healing begins the most of the healing happens after the treatment because we have made many changes in the person with the treatment which will slowly make the patient or the person better day by day only after the treatment the main process of cure starts but when pe- people come for treatment they come with an expectation that from day 1 onwards the healing will start by the end of the 3 weeks or 4 weeks they have an expectation to go back without the disease no matter what the disease is some come with strong diseases come some with simple diseases some come with an extreme condition irrespective of the condition they come this expectation is very common people who come first not even in brazil or from any other country when they come first which is the first time they are undergoing treatment for ayurveda they come with this expectation but they went then when they come for another visit they understand what is happening many a times people come for the treatment by the end of the treatment they go with little disappointment because they come with big expectation the big expectation did not happen they go with little disappointment some go with strong disappointment but we have noticed that these people will definitely write to us in few months time about the progress that has happened and their surprise about the improvement and they will be the people who will book for the next year so early mm-hmm. in 3 months time they will book for the next year's treatment yeah. so first time when they are coming for the treatment their expectations are huge that is the problem this expectations are huge because they try to understand or what ayurveda they heard or they understood is from a western mindset so mindset is the problem and that is not easy to change the mindset of the patient as i told you when we were students it took few years to change the mindset in spite of all the informations all the knowledge all the philosophical understanding sanskrit everything together it was difficult for us to change the mindset how can we expect a change in mindset just before coming to the treatment it is very difficult yeah. so what we have started is as a new uh, thing in the hospital is to have a regular discussion with the patients a common discussion we sit together once in a week or twice in a week we sit together we have a common question and answer sessions so one person's doubt is a clarification for another person so we this joint discussion has created a very good difference in the under, in the understanding process of understanding ayurveda when the understanding of ayurveda is getting better when they understand how we approach the disease when they understand how we on what logic the treatment is designed or planned then their conviction about ayurveda improves when the conviction improves the healing improves so this is a new initiative which is giving great results to us so this discussion of ayurveda with patients is a very very important thing now we understand is very important previously we do discuss but we discuss in the patient's room for their doubt we clarify another person will have a same doubt from a different angle now we all bring them together have a common discussion which improves the way in which they understand ayurveda and of course this is helpful in the healing process also first i should tell that definitely the 
foundational understanding has improved tremendously in this five years some few years before that is some two three years before if we discuss a topic for one hour now it takes just five minutes for us to discuss the same topic which explains that the level of the students are definitely increasing there is no doubt about it the level is going better and better year by year i will maybe day by day also the suggestion or the tip from my point of view seeing the brazilian students in india and also in brazil my suggestion would be to strengthen little more sanskrit i don't tell to strengthen uh, sanskrit grammar or to understand a shloka in sanskrit that those are all very big i don't want to do that but not to translate words rasa is plasma rakta is blood not to translate words try not to translate anything for example if there are dhatus understand as dhatus if there are six rasas try to understand as six rasas in the sanskrit vocabulary madhuram lalavana tiktoshana kashayaka madhuram lalavana tikta kadu kashaya as madhuram lalavana tikta kadu kashaya this has definitely improved there are 50 50 now if i uh, tell tikta many can tell what is tikta but many will also translate tikta amargo they have to translate that translation should not happen you should understand tikta as nik tikta especially gunas in the understanding of gunas because guna is the platform to understand dosha a group of guna together is dosha dosha is everything the understanding of dosha is understanding of ayurveda so when you understand gunas you have to understand you have to experience gunas when we tell snigdha snigdha is not a word unctuous olios nothing like that snigdha is a guna which can have an expression at different level when you have a very good relationship with someone there is an understanding of snigdha when you enjoy a sweet there is an understanding of sweet snigdha yeah. when you touch something you can perceive snigdha when you feel something very pleasant you can understand snigdha snigdha has various expressions as various platform snigdha is not just a word so it is a experience so this translating into portuguese is a thing that that has to change try to understand the sanskrit vocabulary in sanskrit for example i usually tell a common uh, thing in the classrooms even in the even to the brazilians if i ask the brazilians what is olios they will have various expression olios is uh, they'll have to, they'll try to explain they'll not get words it doesn't mean that they don't know what is olios they know but they cannot explain so this snigdha ruksha lagu shita kara sukshma chala everything should be of that level when you talk chala people immediately tell movement instable chala is not just movement or instable when your mind you are thinking too much your mind is chala so this chala has various expressions first try to familiarize the vocabulary repeatedly familiarizing the vocabulary and using it at different point of time your knowledge of gunas increases and the base of gunas is philosophy you understand if you take tarka sangraha or any other philosophy you have the explanation of gunas so philosophical influence of ayurveda is essential when we talk about prithvi the understanding of prithvi people understand it as earth it is the earth element to understand the earth element our philosophical background should be strong 
uh, if I tell this substance a uh, mobile phone has fire element it is a philosophical understanding it's not a function it's not a structural and I cannot take fire element out of it and show I cannot convince you that this has fire element make you touch make you feel but this has fire element that's a philosophy so that philosophical incorporation into the study of Ayurveda is very essential and for which I think the first and foremost suggestion is familiarize with the Sanskrit vocabulary that is the first and foremost thing do not translate much you can have an explanation in Portuguese but don't have a translation in Portuguese word by word translation if someone asks you what is chala you should tell a sentence you should not tell a word you should come to that level that is my first and foremost suggestion which is definitely improved when compared to five years before I have to force myself to to use English words during the classes now I can just go ahead with the Sanskrit vocabulary most of them understand there are a little who don't understand also because they are not very familiar to it because of not repeating repetitively using it but this has definitely improved this is a very important thing and a very interesting thing to close this the problem that I faced and the problem that I fe feel that everyone are facing is when we get little knowledge about something for example we read one chapter or we get some information in one lecture we are trying to utilize this information in some areas we understand that we compartmentalize Ayurveda because Ayurveda is a, a complex thing you cannot understand complex just like that you need various methodologies various approaches to understand this complex thing so our learning process for example if they do a two-year course the learning process is various pathways to reach this level but what happens is when we are in this pathway you understand something you try to use this understanding as Ayurveda that is not Ayurveda that is with little 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 informations we are trying to implement that information in our life when we tell that below Nabi is Vata we get okay below nabi is vata for all treatment of vata we have to apply oil below nabi that is the way in which we tell if we have to explain vata samshraya. it is a classical explanation below nabi is vata this is one information similarly for vata we have vata is present all over the body this is another information vata there are five types prana udana vyana pana samana and then there are much more informations about vata itself what is increase of vata vriddhi kshaya lakshanas of vata there are various things that we study about vata but what happens is we try to use one information of ayurveda in one area so our intention is to collect all informations as much as possible and consolidate the information when we consolidate all the information that we got from all directions the mindset changes when we try to utilize one information our mindset will not change so for example if they study for two years they should not think that by one year I've studied half of Ayurveda or I have studied half of the course your study process completes only in the end where you can consolidate all the informations so that is the key where this mindset changes thank you so much thank you Namaste. Namaste. thanks for that